What is going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series. We're back on location doing off-road things that no one cares about, but we do and it's going to be fun. Today we're going to be testing these Fart Pillin 401's off-road capabilities. Husqvarna lists this thing as the Urban Enduro. Let's see if that's true. Why tell the folks at home why we have this Husqvarna over here. Well, obviously that Husqvarna is one of our giveaway motorcycles. We have seven in the shop right now. Five is a part of the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series, including that Husky, an MT-03, two Groms, and an SV650X. If you want to get entered, click that link down below. Sign up on yamminoob.co. You'll get access to our Discord server, live streams, exclusive content and get entered to win those bikes all at the same time. It's a pretty darn good deal. That is a pretty stinking good deal. Also, Spite, why do we have this? What is this bike? What's going on? Well, this is my personal lamentable DRZ 400 SM. You may recall that this has had a couple of appearances on the channel in the past. Notably, it was at Big Bend, and that was actually the last time I really rode the thing, which was a month and a half ago now. Uh, but we brought it out because I have set this up as a off-roady scrambler supermoto, and I'm in the process of turning it into a dual sport. And we figured, what better way to compare the off-road potential of a primarily road bike than comparing it with another primarily road bike that has the same 17s that are on slightly street biased knobbies, good ground clearance. Feels like a pretty good comparison. Yeah. So I think the one thing that's going to hamper the Husky in this comparison is its ground clearance. As you guys can tell, the exhaust is routed pretty far down on this motorcycle, giving it about maybe four and a half to five inches of clearance. As many as you off-road boys know, unless you have 12 inches of clearance down below and competition suspension, you ain't going nowhere. So we'll see how this thing does. I'm pretty confident in how it's going to do. It's relatively lightweight, so I think it's going to be a ton of fun to chuck around. So today we're going to be doing it on some scrambly, gravel road type of stuff. We're gonna be taking on a very light trail looking thing, gonna take it on some back roads and just see how the thing does stacked up to a motorcycle that is fit to do the job. Let's get into it. Already spite, we're mounted up here on the two bikes. Got a little bit of weather incoming, so this is gonna be an extreme test today. Yeah, that's what dual sporting is all about, bro. Mercifully, my DRZ is playing along today. I'm so happy that uh, <laughs> it wants to start for me. All right, what do you say we just goof around in this little gravel pit for a little bit? Sounds good to me. So I've got the bike here in super moto mode. Uh, as many of you will recall in my test vlog of this machine, I mentioned how I thought that it didn't have the ability to turn ABS off at the rear, but it actually does. You can turn ABS off and have yourself uh, some fun on this motorcycle. There you go. <laughs> I love how light these bikes are. And you know, the Husky for being a, a participant in the beginner bike class, you know, it actually feels pretty good going around here. It feels lightweight, kind of like a dirt bike. The seat's a little dirt bike-esque, you know? How's the, uh, how's it just handling this kind of light gravel, low traction condition? It feels incredibly comfortable in this kind of stuff. Uh, it feels a lot like my sled. And because of these Pirelli Rally Scorpions that it has on it, I think that's a big reason why it feels a lot like my desert sled too, you know? Just Do you got think good... it's down mostly to the tire or the suspension? I think it's a little of both. The tire's doing a lot of work though, I'm not gonna lie. These knobbies are definitely making themselves known in this environment and you can feel that they have a lot more grip than you know a regular street tire i think something like the because we had the groms out here not too long ago and you know on those <laughs> little street bias tires it's really hard to get uh, any kind of traction here but still feels really fun do you feel hampered at all by your low ground clearance doing goofy stuff like this no on on simple stuff like this the ground clearance is literally no issue at all um so i would say if you do have a smart pill and 401 definitely go hit up some gravel because this is a ton of fun and it's a great way to pick up some skills too how's the ergonomics feel off-road because yeah you know, so I'm... that that's a big one uh, for me is that this motorcycle uh you know the gas tank and the shape of it right here through the legs feels really good honestly but 
the bars are really low and you can probably tell from this angle that I'm crouched over quite a bit. Yeah, you don't look particularly comfortable standing up on it. Yeah, I, I would like maybe an extra three to four inches on these bars and then it would actually work super well. But, you know, for a totally stock setup for a bike that's urban enduro, right? Not true enduro, mm -hmm. it does okay, you know? And it can do this. Yeah, there you go. It always looks kind of nice when you can throw a big roost like that after you. Looks like yeah. you know what you're doing. <laughs> Just barely. People know I'm a well, I'm a track day boy, but I have a little bit of off-roading fun every once in a while. All right, Spite, what do you say we tackle something a little more challenging? Yeah, we actually have this little route over here that is not the easiest dirt path. In fact, it looks pretty overgrown now since last we've gone down this. I have faith in the Husky. Yeah, this is, I believe, where we're going to see if its ground clearance is in fact good enough to scramble. And I will let you lead on in. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I will take the lead. So as I mentioned, the best thing about this bike is its low weight. I feel really confident on it just because I know that if I drop it or if I have a situation where I got to muscle it up a little bit, I've got the clearance for it, you know, and I've got the power to lift it up even with my svelte 175 pound frame. Let's see here. Whoop. There we go. Little hillside rock garden here. Yeah. Oh. That branch totally just grabbed my clutch. <laughs> that was not cool. Mercifully, I have bark busters on here. Yeah, I don't, so I might catch a catch an interesting situation here. <laughs> How's that suspension doing down here? Dude, it's doing great, honestly, for what it is. I'm so impressed. <laughs> Any bike is an adventure bike, guys. Just believe. Yeah, come on, Lone Spark. Come on. Come on. Maybe now people will say that this is actually off-roading. Totally cased it. <laughs> <laughs> that spart is definitely not to me not meant to be where it is right now. Definitely not. I cased it on that rock so hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. No, no one can tell me this isn't off roading. Look at this. Shit. Come on. Man, that was almost too gnarly for the DRZ. <laughs> I'm stuck in the middle here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I literally have cased in the middle here. <laughs> no, little spart. <laughs> You're doing so good. <laughs> All right, let's get you out of here. I think it's actually, oh, look at that, it's set. I can jump off of it. <laughs> so yeah, it definitely took a wrong turn. You should have stayed on the side of the road over there. Yeah, I mean, we were casing the DRZ in there. You needed a little bit more than uh, my nine inches. So how's that front tire feel? Because I don't think you have the, um, the, you have a slightly narrower front end than I do. I have uh, a 120. Yeah, I think this is a 110 for this tire. And uh, what do we got here? All right, oh, conquering, conquering. It feels really good, honestly. Nice. I, I am so surprised with what this bike is doing. <laughs> <laughs> now that was fun. And that's how it's done, baby. Hell yeah. There you go. Guys, you can scramble whatever you want. <laughs> I go, to, I go to the TJ's KTM and be like, my dirt bike feels kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you like this? You, you've even got like burdock stuck in the freaking headlight. Oh yeah, dude, I was whacking through stuff up to like here. There's pollen on my freaking uh, uh, mirror right here. That was awesome. I can't believe this. Well, I got stuck in that really gnarly rut. <laughs> Yeah, but again, I was casing the DRZ in there. Yeah, no, dude, on that rock, I gotta look at this skid plate because I f***ing smashed it into it. If only it didn't have the exhaust being routed down here, if it went up, this would be a pretty decent little scrambler. It really would, yeah. Like, that damn. Would, that would be a key mod is getting the older exhaust pipe. Uh, if it had a taller bar, because it has these tires, it literally just feels like a lighter weight version of my desert sled. It feels great. Oh, it feels so weird coming right off the DRZ. Mm -hmm. It's definitely still a street bike. Yeah, honestly, I'm seeing the suspension work and it's just, you know, it's, it's really soaking up everything. It doesn't look bad at all. No, it doesn't feel bad either. But it's so nice and low for somebody who's like, you know, okay, the, the dual sport world is really hard to get into. That thing is so tall and so big. Yeah, I mean, big. Look, look at that seat height right here, you know? Yeah. 
just being able to get on a little bike like this and go do fun dual sporty stuff that's a huge win huge win and we just proved that it could totally do it you know yeah. like you could totally if you want to get a street bike that can also do some off-roady stuff and you don't want to deal with the crazy high seat height and some of the compromise that have a dual sport dude the husky is an awesome machine absolutely i mean you just saw what i took it through <laughs> I, I cannot believe you made it through that. <laughs> I really can't. That was crazy. It's all because I've been riding my KTM 250, bro. Yup. KTM. <laughs> Bless up. Well, why don't we go see how it handles the street and the twisties now that, we can, now that we've proved it's a uh, capable off-roading machine. All right, guys. So as important as off-roading is in the dual sport world, you got to have some good on-road manners, too. And so now we've got the Husky out here on the mean streets of Lime Creek Road here in Austin, Texas, doing some fun little back road uh, hill carving, let's say. And Spite, why don't you tell us some of the things that the DRZ is compromised with when it comes to its on-road abilities because it's so dirt focused. Right, yeah, and you hit the nail on the head there. They had to make a lot of concessions with this bike, even though it is a supermoto designed for the street, it's still based on an off-road platform. So the, the bike just doesn't really handle all that great. The steering's a little bit twitchy just because of how long the front forks are and how high up you are. It's also just a little bit weird to get into kind of an attack position if you want to really carve up a corner on this bike. You really are just meant to sit kind of tall, upright with a straight back or get your butt out of the seat. You know, it, it almost feels a little bit more like it wants to be an adventure bike than a sport bike. Yeah, it seems like the DRZ and more true dual sport bikes, uh, you know, they want you to have the kind of, you know, foot out, leaned over style like that, as opposed to the more attack and leaned over position like this. Um, and that's really where the Husky actually works super well, is that you can treat this like it's a little, you know, Duke 390, because that's what it's based on. And I just feel like this bike is set up so well to do anything. Um, I, I think with these adjustable WP forks, the Pirelli Rally Scorpions, which is a great tire. It works so well both on and off-road. Um, this is such a fun motorcycle, and, I, and for my opinion right now, it might be my number one pick in the beginner bike class. It's such a sweet ride. Yeah, actually going back to those tires, how do they feel on-road compared to off? Are they Do they make like a chattery, vibrational feel? Do you feel like they're significantly worse than a street bias tire? So that's the thing about these tires as opposed to like a true blue knobby or something like that where you know when you get on the side of the tire of a knobby on road it has that really weird kind of you know stepping feel as it steps over the knobs and gets on the side it'll typically hold just fine but it feels a little funny uh they've done such a clever trick with these pirelli rally scorpions and that when you get it on the side it feels like a sport bike tire because the knobs are really close together um, you don't really feel that compromise on road. I feel like I can just chuck this thing any which way I want, and it feels really confidence-inspiring. Um, it's pretty that's, awesome. That's great, because these, these Shinkos on here, which obviously Shinko's a budget brand compared to Pirelli, but these things do not feel very good. They handle in the wet like crap, and you know, part of that's my budget choice in tires, but it's also because I can't find a Navi 17 that does work really well. You know, this is about as good as I could get for a 50-50 tire. But I think a point in the DRZ's favor over something like the Husky is that you can swap on a set of 21s and 18s on there and then have like a really capable off-road machine. Yes, I, I can just go get a set of DRZ S rims, slap them on here and go do anything I want. Yeah, uh, that, that is a super capable bike with that setup. But again, it, I, we were talking about uh, earlier how you die like a man on the DRZ. There is not <laughs> a single piece of technology in here. No. No, it'll even let, like we said, it'll let you start in first gear and you just roll out. Yep. It's, this thing is just completely a dinosaur. And that's, it, you know, compared to something like the Husky, which is displacing almost the same amount. And it, it kind of makes no sense in the husky world unless you're really trying to be an off-roady boy yeah honestly i feel like this thing has plenty of punch and poke actually why don't we do this let's do a little first gear roll on shall we we'll see the difference yep
All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. I will never be defeated! <laughs> I will never be defeated! <laughs> This bike has some pretty good first gear punch. I feel like if I was a little bit lighter, I would have gotten ahead of you. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. Because um, that bike also weighs less than this bike as well. And it does have a couple more cubes of displacement. It definitely should walk all over the Husky, but our weight difference is hard to succumb or overcome whenever uh, we're comparing these bikes that are so similar, you know? Honestly, if I were going to do it all over again, I don't think I would get the Sumo so much as I would get an actual proper dual sport. And if I was going to get another DRZ, i just get the Husky. Because yeah. this, for what I wanted this bike to do when I bought it, the Husky's just set right from the factory, you know? Yeah, I definitely did feel off-road that the Husky is compromised. You, you can tell, like, it'll do it, but it's not in his element, you know? It's not, a, right. it's not an off-road bike. But... Man, I mean, it, it just it just trundled over whatever I wanted to throw at it, and it was pretty impressive. And when you get back on road, this is just like a regular street bike. You don't have to deal with dual sportness, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think the Husky makes a super strong case for itself. Um, a couple mods I would make to it would be a taller bar to give you a more commanding stance when you're on it and reroute the exhaust, and, man, you're, you're good to go for 60 to 70% of the trails you'd want to tackle with something like this. I imagine, you know, we live here in Texas and number one, we don't have a lot of trails and number two, the trails we do have are very rocky and some are extremely challenging. Um, so the Husky would not be suited for those kinds of things. But if you live somewhere like the Pacific Northwest or maybe out east where there's a lot of those kind of easygoing dirt road trails that they have between forests and stuff, dude, this bike is awesome. It'll happily do that stuff. The price point, man. It's I know! It's five grand! I have adjustable suspension, torquey engine, Pirelli Rally Scorpions, awesome looks! Are you kidding me? It's so, like, why buy any other motorcycle? Why buy beginner? anything else? It's so awesome! I feel like we're about to sell all the fart pillins out there, and we're about to see a bunch of fart pillins on Craigslist being like, seven grand! I know what I got! So, Spite, would you say that the Husqvarna Spark Pillin 401 is, is dual sport worthy? Is it worthy of a Scrambler title or of even a dual sport title? I would say, yeah. I, I'd say it's completely approved. It did remarkably well. And it only, the, the only time it really felt compromised to me from what I heard from you off road was when we cased it going over that big <laughs> rut. Dude, well, there, was that, there was that rock, too, where I absolutely smashed it into it. <laughs> but again, that's aimed right at that bike's weak spot off-road, is, mm -hmm. is its ground clearance. You know, if it had the up-routed exhaust, maybe you wouldn't have had that issue. Yeah, I'd have a couple more inches, and I was like we always say, a couple more inches is all you need. So yeah, I would agree. I think this bike is definitely scrambler-approved, and probably, like, 80% of the way to being like dual sport approved. I, I'm shocked at what this thing could do. Um, and I'm not like, I know I have a little bit of off-road experience, but I'm not an off-road expert. I think in the hands of someone who really knows what they're doing, shit, what could you not tackle with this thing? It'd be great. Ah, so real bummer, this video is actually over, but you're in luck. There are hundreds of other Yami new videos you can go and check out. Hit this one right over here. Watch it. Do it for Yami Chan.